Is Canada Express entry system ending? Let's discuss in this video. If you are thinking to move to Canada, please subscribe to our channel to get all the recent updates about Canada immigration. Let's continue with the video. So we'll be dividing this video in three section. First section will be discussing what is happening. Is this actually true or not? And if the news is true, what is the extent of it? And what are other updates related to that and why it is happening? Third section is we'll be telling you some solutions. If you're planning to move to Canada and express entry system will not be there, it is not the end of life. Still, there are a lot many ways by which you will be able to move to Canada. So in the last section, we'll be discussing about those ways. So there have been some updates floating around on social media about express entry system getting ended. We were also getting so many questions. So we did some investigation, found out what was the context and what is actually happening. So you know that no FSW draws were happening last year. We already made a video about it as well. So few months ago, IRCC has released some communication about all these delays in FSW draws and why they are not conducting those which was made available to the public in January so everyone has access to that we will also try to put a link down below so let's discuss the summary of that memorandum so in the memo there were five key points to note we will talk about them one by one let's talk about the first point the first point is around pausing the express entry draws for CEC FSW and FST candidates in the first half of 2022 and when this news was released everyone started panicking everyone started worrying about what will happen to their file there won't be any express entry draws but just take a pause take a step back and understand was express entry draw happening in last year express entry draw was not happening since december 2020 so why we should be panicking about it we were already aware that from past 12 13 months no express entry fsw draw was happening but at least they have given us some clarity in our previous video as well we discussed about why express entry system is failing they are not conducting the express entry draws that is absolutely fine but there was no transparency they were not announcing it to the public till what time they are pausing the fsw draws but now i will take it as a good news because at least they have a plan they are pausing the fsw draws but at least they are giving us a timeline for that for six months they will likely to pause express entry draws including cc fsw fst but it doesn't mean that they are not inviting people to canada they are not sending any ita and they're not converting temporary workers to pr so let's understand if they were inviting thousand people from express entry system an express entry system is not the only immigration plan that canada government has to invite and convert temporary workers to permanent residents. Because of other programs, they were able to fulfill their immigration target for 2021. Despite not doing any FSW express entry draws, and an interesting fact is most of the people moved to Canada via express entry program. So if no draws were happening and they were able to fulfill the immigration target last year, so this year as well, they want to focus on fulfilling the immigration target, which is 400,000. Plus there is a backlog of 1.8 million applications already in the pool so even if they will start inviting people from that pool they will be able to fulfill their immigration target for this year so they were already overburdened so currently they have two options either they can mess up everything by focusing on the backlog as well as to the future applicants who will be applying in express entry system or they can only focus on the backlog and once everything is smooth everything is up to speed they can start focusing on the express entry new applicants as well so i think they are doing the right thing and i will take it as a positive news because at least they are giving us some transparency that they are pausing it for six months and six months will go by like nothing because everyone who is there in the pool everyone who is planning to move to canada waited for one one and a half year they can at least wait for five more months because january is already gone right so you can focus on your skills your application your experience english language capabilities which will help you to get a job easily in canada so i will take it as a positive news and also it's a good news for inland candidates if you take example of thousand immigrants that in let's say 2020 19 they invited thousand immigrants from outside canada out of which 700 from express entry program right so instead of focusing on 700 people from express entry system they will be focusing on other programs cnp programs and inviting candidates from those pool and 700 people might be getting invited from pnp programs temporary work visas and maybe 300 or 200 will be coming from express 
service entry system. So there is a shift in the plan to fix the issue of backlog, but it doesn't mean that express entry system is getting ended. So I think all this applies to people who are still in the pool and haven't received the ITA. But the good news here is for the people who already received the ITAs, right? Hmm. Because now the government is focusing on those people. They are planning to clear the backlog so you can hear about some good news really soon. Yeah. So that's another <laughs> that's another positive news because yeah. people who received copr ita they were not able to move to canada so it's a good thing for that as well so they will i'm sure focusing on the backlog applications now second key point was very close to the example that i have given you they may reduce the number of application that they will be picking from express entry system by 50 percent so earlier as i mentioned that if 70 percent of the people were coming via express entry system now it will be reduced to maybe 30 percent and other programs will be given priority because the tr2 pr program that was piloted last year was a success so they were able to meet the immigration target only because of the tr2 pr pathways and cc express entry draws pnp draws so they have a success story they will be able to implement the same plan for 2022 but at least they have given a timeline that they may start doing express entry draws by july or august so to conclude key point two express entry target will be reduced by 50 percent so that they can focus on PNP and other programs. And also in February, they will be announcing the new immigration target as well, because as of now it is 410,000 for this year. So that will be interesting to see if they are reducing it or increasing it, because still there is a huge demand as labor market, which is not being fulfilled by the people who are already there in Canada. So they are in a desperate need to invite more people to Canada. Third point, because of which a lot of people were panicking. So it is about the CRS score. You know that people were not able to achieve 470, 480 score as well. And now in the announcement, they mentioned that it may rise to 500. So 500 seems like impossible, but this will not be a permanent CRS cutoff. This will only be there for initial six months. Let's say if they are starting the express entry draws on July, it will be reduced every month by every draw because you know that there are so many people in the pool they have high scores and express entry fsw draw did not happen last year and this year for next six months maybe so whenever it will start it will start from a very high crs this was their prediction this is what they mentioned in the memorandum around 500 and it will start reducing by every draw so you can say that for at least six months it will be moving around 480 500 now let's talk about point number four which is about increasing the processing time for fsw draws there were times in past when people used to receive the golden email within two to three months we were the lucky ones in that time but now from last one one and a half year we have seen a trend where people are receiving the golden email in more than 20 months so the processing time has increased a lot and in 2022, it's expected to rise up to 36 months. So that is a lot of time. We have a live example. So we applied for a travel visa for our parents. And I think processing time for that is few months only. But we are waiting from past, I think, six months mm -hmm. for that. So that is one of the example. There are so many other examples. Spousal visa is getting delayed. So processing time is increasing for all the programs. But in this memorandum, they have mentioned that for express entry, whenever they will start doing it, it will increase to 36 months. I think it's for the obvious reasons because they are trying to clear the backlog. So it will obviously take time. Fifth key point was around the PNP draws. So you know that FSW, FS3 draws were not happening past year, but PNP draws were already happening because they need to fulfill the job demands for the provinces, if not for whole Canada. So they were getting pressurized from the provinces that they need people, they need to fulfill the shortage of job market in their provinces. So PNP draws will continue to happen even for this initial six months and throughout the year. So if you are in the PNP pool, then it is a good news because that is not getting paused. So these were the key points, but let's understand and what is the extent of it? Yes, the number of application will be reduced by 50% for express entry system. There may not be any draws for express entry for initial six months till July maybe because they want to focus on the backlog. They want to focus on the Afghan nationals and other programs like TR to PR, temporary work permits. So yes, overall the news is true. The processing time will be increased. Express entry draws are not happening, but I will not take it so negatively because this was already happening from past 12 months, right? So don't panic about it. This is not the end of Express Entry System, Canada immigration system. There are hundreds of immigration plans by which you will be able to move to Canada. 
if that is your dream. So the news is true, the extent is this, but now let's understand what all options do you have if you are planning to move to Canada this year, maybe next year, because if you will be in the express entry program, the chances are reduced by 50%, right? So let's understand what you can do. So what should be your action plan? We have already made so many videos about increasing your CRS score. And if you're not eligible for express entry program, what other programs are. So I will just say that don't put all your eggs in one basket. So do not think that you are only focusing on the express entry FSW draws and you will get the ticket to come to Canada because there might be something unusual like happened in last year. So do not only rely on express entry FSW draws. Just explore PNP program, explore temporary work permit, explore study visa because that is the easiest way and the score will also be reduced in 2022 because as I mentioned that they are focusing on giving permanent residence to the people who are already there in Canada, right? So one suggestion is that explore all other programs. Do not only rely on express entry program. Second suggestion that I will give to you is that work on your French capabilities if you are admin that you want to move to Canada. I have seen example of people who are more than 35 years of age and it was their dream to move to Canada. So they really worked hard to make this dream come true. They achieved good CRS score because now they have French capabilities as well. And this is what you can do. If your scores are reducing because of the age, you know that this year the chances are less, but next year, obviously score will be reduced after your birthday. So you can work on your French capabilities. Even if the CRS score will be 490, 480, you will have a strong chance compared to people who will not have French capabilities. Third suggestion is that work on some skills because if you are very sure that you will have good IELTS score, you will be able to achieve 480, 490, then work on some skills in your home country because obviously till the time you're not getting ITA, you don't want to waste that time, right? Because skills will play a very important role to get your dream job in Canada. So just moving to Canada should not be your dream. Getting successful in Canada should be your dream. So you will be able to achieve that by only upskilling yourself. And the fourth suggestion is about gaining more work experience in your home country, specifically in the NOC code and in the profile that you wish to do in Canada. Suppose you want to be a graphic designer in Canada, so start looking for jobs in your home country and start gaining experience because at the end, that experience will really help you when you move here. Yeah, because let's say people move to Canada and then after one year they think, okay, I should move to a coding background, I should be a developer. That one year can be saved if you gain that experience in your home country. So as soon as you move to Canada, you will have work experience in web development or let's say graphic designing. And then there are chances that you will get a job in your role when you move to Canada. So fourth point is increase your experience in a particular domain. Fifth suggestion that we want to give you is that rethink about your plans to move to Canada. I would say that this was blessing in disguise. From past one year, there was no draw happening for next six months. There may not be any draws. So just sit back, give yourself some time to think about your plan to move to Canada. Write down all the pros and cons again, because situation has changed in past one year, right? When you decided about moving to Canada, let's say two years back, situation was absolutely different. So in past one year, so many things happened. So your decision might change. You might think that, no, I don't want to move to Canada. I will stay in my home country. Or you will think, no, I will not move to Canada. I may move to Australia or New Zealand. Or you might be 200% sure that Canada is the best country that you want to move to and you want to settle down there. So I will give you this suggestion that utilize this time to rethink about all your plans to move to Canada so that when you will get the ITA, when you will get chance to move to Canada, you don't have to think twice. You can just book your flight and meet us for a coffee. So to conclude, I will just say, take it positively as you have taken mm -hmm. last 12 months very positively because worrying about it, panicking about it will not give you anything. Just calm down. Think about all the suggestions that we have given you and explore all other programs as well. Do not only rely on express entry. And if you want to consult with a licensed immigration consultant, there is a link down below. He will be able to guide you about all other programs that are available other than Express Entry System. So book and consultation, talk to him about your case. There may be some program which is suitable for you. So we hope you liked all the information. Let us know in the comment section. Till next time. Stick around.